Are you looking for a light, robust, mechanical ABL probe for your 3D printer? We'll keep watching to see if the Euclid probe is for you. I know it's not for everyone, but for me, auto bed leveling is a great addition to a 3D printer to improve repeatability and user friendliness. Previously, I made a video on an ABL probe shootout where I tested the repeatability of six popular probes with a variety of speeds and conditions. I found they were all accurate enough and that the choice on which to get should come down to other factors. The test mule for that video was the FL Sun Super Racer, which from factory comes with a magnetic clip on micro switch and commenters on the video suggested they were interested in this idea. So when the creator of the Euclid probe contacted me asking me to try it, it was a perfect fit. So let's jump straight in. Firstly, the Euclid probe is named after Euclid of Alexandria, the father of geometry. The Euclid probe allows auto bed leveling for a 3D printer, laser or CNC machine. It consists of two halves, the upper half permanently mounted to the print head and then the lower half with a high quality micro switch is magnetically coupled to the upper half when needed. We can use this probe in two ways, a simple installation where we manually place it on the print head when we want a probe and then manually pull it off afterwards or in a more sophisticated configuration where the switch is docked and then we build a G-code sequence to pick it up and use it when we need to probe the bed. We can then again use G-code once the probing is done to stow the probe ready for printing. It's a novel idea and essentially the same concept as the Clicky Probe which is a mod available for Voron printers. The most common way to buy the Euclid is in a kit and a list of resellers are available on the website covering most parts of the world including Australia. The price for the kit is 25 US dollars which makes it one of the most affordable amongst the popular options. The kit in this video was provided free of charge in accordance with my review policy. The Euclid probe is open source so you can make the whole thing including the PCB from scratch if you prefer. On paper we're off to a good start so let's assemble the kit. The most common way to get the Euclid is as a kit which requires minimal assembly and soldering of six pins. To assemble the kit, we're going to follow the excellent instructions available online, and that includes printing this very handy assembly aid. The first step is to debag all of the components and to sort them. We can see that the two halves of the PCB are temporarily attached and that's how we should leave them for now. The magnets are also stored in a color-coded 3D printed piece, and this will assist us in inserting them correctly later on. We're going to start by using our assembly aid to solder on the switch and the connector. The JST connector goes in first and notches in the aid mean it can only be inserted the correct way. For the switch we actually have a choice of two ways to install it and that relates to the position of the switch and whether it's on the blunt side or the pointy side. I went for the top option for the reason that that would put the switch closer to the nozzle in my installation. We then position the PCB above these components with the surface mount components facing upwards. Everything is pushed down flush and we're ready to solder. The recommendation is to just solder the center pin for the two components, not all three. As before we proceed, we want to flip everything over and adjust the position and angle of the components and also make sure they're sitting flush on the PCB. When we have this confirmation, we can solder the remaining pins. We're then going to use some flush cutters to snip off the ends of the leads. We then insulate our solder joints, there's a few options available and I went for Captain Tape, which after trimming looked fairly neat. We're not finished with our assembly aid because now we're going to insert the SMD nuts and the aid will hold them in the perfect position. The PCB is then positioned over the top once more and after some jiggling everything should sit flat. Next we're going to take one half of our magnets, still in their 3D printed holder and place them on one side of the PCB. We can see their position matches so it's a simple case of inserting the retaining screws and we can then pull off the 3D printed holder. For the other half, we want the poles to be opposite, so we use the color coding of the 3D printed parts to ensure this before a final tighten and removal of the 3D printed part. Assembly is finished, apart from snapping the two halves free, including removal of the center portion and tidying up the edges of the PCB, so everything is neat and flush. With everything done, I verified that the two halves would magnetically couple together and that the magnets were strong enough to prevent any unwanted movement. The whole unit with mounting screws weighs 7 grams, but when we're printing, the switch half won't be attached 
so the moving mass is only 4 grams plus your printed mount, which should hopefully still be very light. For me, that assembly was a highlight thanks to the instructions and printed aid making it pretty much foolproof. Time to move on to the first installation and accuracy testing. We have a range of pre-existing solutions for mounting the probe to various printers. For instance here the Ender 3 and the Ender 5 mount which you'll see later. There's also mounts available that attach to the part cooling fan already on the printer. If you're going custom like I was for my initial mount on the Super Racer, we have the key dimensions as well as a downloadable step file on the website too. This made it really straightforward to design a mount to suit this particular machine. And here's the upper half of the probe bolted onto my conversion mount. With this in place, we can see that the magnets sit higher than the nozzle, but once the lower half of the probe is in place, it rightly sits lower than the nozzle, so it will hit the bed first. Wiring, as we know from the plug, is extremely simple. All we need is positive ground and signal, which I wired to the existing probe plug. On this machine, the probe goes into an end stop port, which not only provides ground and signal, but a supply voltage of 5 volts. However, the newest versions of the probe, as written on the PCB, are actually 24 volts tolerant. This printer already had the firmware set up for a simple probe, but I will cover firmware in more detail later. With the probe temporarily installed on the Super Racer, I was able to recreate the earlier testing I did on the ABL shootout video. This meant using Clipper's built-in repeatability test to probe over and over at a range of different speeds and on different surfaces. After collecting all of my data, I took the standard deviation from the output in the console and added it to my spreadsheet linked below. Just like the probes I previously tested, the accuracy and repeatability of the Euclid probe was extremely good. To put it in perspective, here's a scale diagram of 0.1 and 0.2mm layer heights, plus an average human hair, and then the standard deviation of the worst of these probes, so I can safely say accuracy and repeatability is not a concern. If you want to read more about the accuracy testing conducted in-house, there's a page available on the Euclid website. The install on the Super Racer was only temporary so I could test the Euclid in the same conditions as the other probes, so let's move on to the permanent install which is on the end of 5. First up, physical mounting, and as I said earlier, a solution is already available for the end of 5. It's simply a matter of heading over to their GitHub, going to the end of 5 folder and then downloading the SDLs. The parts are designed for a stock Ender 5, whereas mine has been converted to linear rails using a printermods.com kit as covered in a previous video. The reason this is relevant is that I had to trim the printed part to suit the aftermarket plate and I also needed to file down the dock just a little bit to create clearance for it to sit a little higher. Apart from this, the pre-made parts worked a treat. I was able to crimp on a JST connector with the supplied components, inserting the cable on the loom end matching up the wires to the diagram underneath before bolting the mount onto the plate and then mounting the dock in the upper front left corner of the machine, adjusting its height to line up with the upper half of the probe. Eagle eye viewers might notice that I finally applied the insulation tape to the inside of my enclosed Ender 5, which helped get the chamber temperature back up to the mid 60 degrees. As for wiring, I once again plugged it into a spare end stop port. Before we continue with the firmware, we need to work out the X and Y offset of our probe. I simply used a ruler for this and measured minus 43, minus 20. We need to work out the coordinates that we can move the print head to, to be able to dock and undock the lower half of the probe. The first position being just to the side of the dock, the second being the probe halves being directly in line with each other, and the third being an exit position with the probe in place. To do this, we home X and Y, and then use the printer's controls to manually move the print head into these positions. This is quite a straightforward process and involves moving X and then Y back and forth until we locate position 1 and then write down the coordinates. After that, we can manually move 1mm at a time sideways into position 2, write down the coordinates again, before finally moving the probe out of the dock to record the coordinates for position 3. Here are my numbers, although every printer is different, so there's no shortcuts here. We now have what we need to set up the firmware, in this case Marlin, by using a few tricks. The way I see it, we have two options with firmware. We can use the probe as a Z end stop and an ABL probe, or we can run a dedicated end stop and use the Euclid probe just for ABL. Typically I prefer option 1, but it comes with a challenge. And that challenge is what happens if we try to home the machine without the lower half of the probe in place. 
as we can see, homing X and Y is fine, but as it comes back for Z, we would expect a crash. But fortunately, the probe reports triggered when the switch is not in place to keep things safe. In Clipper or RepRap firmware as we're seeing here, we can change the default homing or probing behavior to use our three positions to pick up the probe as necessary. In Marlin, we don't have this same control, so we're gonna use tricks such as custom menus, macros, and auto start G code to add the functionality we need. This is something I've covered in detail in a dedicated video before, so in this video, I'll keep things brief. My base changes for the probe were taken from the documentation on the website, and then I set up the probe to use the Zmin end stop pin, defining it as a fixed mounted probe. In configuration advanced, I enabled macros as per my other video, and then on the root of the SD card, I set up three macros. The first homes X and Y, and then moves to my three positions in order to pick up the probe, the second does this but in reverse to get rid of the probe, and the third one stows the probe but without homing X and Y first. Finally, I define a custom menu in Marlin that refers to these macros, so from the menu I can easily handle the deploying and stowing of the probe. Here it is in action. When I turn on the printer, I get confirmation that my macros have loaded. I can then access my custom menu and use these options to control the printer. For instance, the first one homing X and Y and then picking up the probe, or the third option, stowing the probe without homing first, ideal for after auto bed leveling probing. In terms of my slicer, at the start of a print job, I just need to make sure that I pick up the probe, home Z, run the ABL, and then stow the probe before printing, all of which use my macros. If you want to adopt this approach, I've uploaded onto my GitHub, this branch of the Marlin firmware, as well as my macro file. For those preferring to use option two, Rest assured that documentation is available for this, and also that documentation is available for RepRap firmware, as well as Clipper firmware. To set the Z offset, we can use Marlin's inbuilt wizard, and after the machine homes, manually remove the probe, and then use the LCD controls to lift the bed up until a piece of paper is just caught underneath the nozzle. My approach might seem a bit finicky, but it does in fact work. Here's how it works for an actual print, homing X and Y, picking up the probe, then homing Z, before probing a grid over the entire bed, and once this is done, stowing the probe ready to print. And with all of this in place, my first layers have been good since installing the probe. Functionally, I think it works pretty well, but like any probe, the Euclid has strengths and weaknesses. The price and weight are very competitive, and the wiring is very easy, and it is mechanical so it detects any bed surface without any additional tuning. Downsides are that it's risky to print near the dock, as there's a chance you could deploy the lower half by accident. However, this wouldn't be a problem on a printer that can travel beyond the bed, as you could simply put the dock out there where regular prints won't interfere. As we've seen with Marlin at least, the setup is a little involved. Personally, I was just happy to try a new option. Let me know what you think in the comments, whether you've used this one before, or whether you think it has any potential. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.